So hi, I'm Tom from PC Games Hardware in Germany. That's our, our team name. It's also it's well, it's a German games magazine. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later. And that's where my nickname comes from, actually, which is pretty simple. It's PCGH, short handle for PC Games Hardware, underscore Tom, and yeah, from Germany. Uh, I used to study pharmaceutical chemistry actually before I became an editor later on because uh, I wasn't really having that much fun with my studies anymore so after I, I graduated from college I uh, took a, like an internship at a German games magazine called GameStar and they were looking for an intern for their hardware, um, for the hardware department and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do yet so I thought well just for the sheer fun of it, let's let's apply. And I didn't even think that I would get an answer. But like a couple weeks later, I got uh, invited to an interview. So I went over to Munich, and uh, they said like, "Well, we'd like to try this with you." And uh, I had a lot of fun. And after a couple of, couple of months, they were like, "Well, actually, would you like to st start being a trainee here and get an uh, you know journalistic um, education?" So I thought, "Well." Of course, because I had a lot of fun, we were nice guys in the office, so I did that. And uh, I spent two years with IDG, so that's the, the mother company of GameStar, before I switched to PC Games Hardware, which is the largest IT gaming, gaming IT related magazine in Germany. We have like 35,000 issues, print issues we sell a month, and our website is growing strong and I can't even tell you how many million unique visitors we have each month. I do know that our Facebook account has like 170 something thousand likes and we have like something 70,000 plus subscribers on YouTube. Uh, so we have kind of a decent, um, decent turnout and we have an overclocking community as well, uh, a team on, P on HWBot and I've been myself playing around with overclocking a little bit uh, but just you know because my system was getting a little too slow for the games I like to play so I did some CPU overclocking on air and that's pretty much it but I never really thought about it com as a competitive thing for quite a long time. Well, serious overclocking I pretty much started only like a year ago really when I met Roman der Bauer and I did some article with him for, for the magazine and I really got hooked on the LN2 overclocking thing so <coughs> excuse me, I started, uh, started doing that like about a year ago. I got a pot from Roman and uh, got myself some, some hardware, some Haswell stuff, some uh, Ivy Bridge and I also got myself some, some older socket 775 stuff to you know just play around with it and uh, this has actually been my first live competition I've ever took part in. Uh, I was quite nervous and uh, it's a different thing when you're at home at your, at your own place benching for yourself or maybe with just one friend, nobody like watching over your shoulder, no cameras, there's like less pressure because, I don't know, well, it was definitely a fun experience though. My system wasn't quite fast enough and I was back in college still and I didn't have a lot of money and also wasn't willing to spend a lot of money on a new PC so I thought well how could I push the performance a little more and I, I read about overclocking before so I thought well this might be an idea to at least get to play <coughs> more playable frame rate again. At first, The first CPU I actually overclocked um, is quite old. I think it was uh, it was a Cyrix CPU, so that's like quite a long while ago, and had like 166 megahertz. Um, actually, back then I was still a student in school, and I couldn't afford a Pentium. Um, and the Cyrix CPU was just much much cheaper than than the Intel CPUs were, and their performance, like compared per the performance per megahertz. It totally sucked, like the 166 megahertz CPU couldn't even keep up with a Pentium 100 megahertz. And um, so I overclocked that to 200 megahertz 
And later on, the next CPU I pretty much overclocked was on an Athlon XP, where I read about that trick with the uh, <coughs> with the with the pencil. Uh, so you could basically connect um, to to sir to different circuits on on the CPU, which usually wouldn't have had any electrical connection while just painting a little uh, coat of graphite on it so that there would be some conduction and you could improve performance and yeah that was I don't know 15 years ago maybe but I don't have any real memory of like the good old days like some of those people talk about some of the guys because they were into competitive overclocking already back then and for me it was just like well I don't care how much more performance I actually get out of it and I wasn't going for any efficiency I just tried to squeeze one or more frame out of the um, the games I was playing that's that's pretty much it and by now, I have to say, yeah, I'm kind of fed up with Haswell as well, and I'm looking forward to, to Skylake, and I hope that this is going to be more, more interesting again. I think it's actually a pretty cool idea, um, and actually, um, Roman and I, we did an event for, especially for Rookies th this year, because we have some, some newcomer guys in our PC Games hardware team in, in Germany, and a lot of them post decent scores with water or under air, but none of them seem to really make the step up to LN2 or even DICE. So we thought, well, that might have several reasons, of course. Well, it's, it's not too cheap a hobby. Um, people might be afraid of breaking their hardware or just generally a little overwhelmed with all the stuff that's you know, you don't have to worry about when overclocking with water or air, like insulating everything, stuff like that. Um, maybe people don't even know where to get LN2 or stuff like that. So we thought, well, let's give these guys a chance to actually overclock with, uh, with LN2. And we started an event with Asus and Seasonic, uh, which we called the Asus ROG Camp. And we held an online qualification where people could post scores in over a course of four weeks. And the best eight participants were invited to come to, to Nuremberg, to close to our office, where we held a live competition where Roman and I gave these guys an introduction into LN2 overclocking. And then they had like a day to train. And the second day we had a competition with uh, Z97 motherboards and the Devil's Canyon CPUs where they could just, you know, go all out. And actually, out of eight of them, six are still hooked on this and are actually posting scores with LN2 on HWBot now. So uh, we like to do something like that again to bring more young guys into overclocking. So it seems that having OC esports like events does help the community to grow. Like on a, on a professional level, I think there's, there's going to be like maybe 10 guys in the future which are, you could say like superstars, like probably 8-pack is already, uh, Roman is for the German region probably, uh, which are, or Nick Xi or something for the Asian market, who are really pushing, pushing their stuff to the limit. And, I think this is it's like an elite which has a lot of more resources of course than a lot of other overclockers have and they really have like industry support and um, it, probably I could imagine that comes to a point where we have a situation where top the really top elite overclockers like for example Kingpin is a good example you would see them working exclusively for one company and trying to yeah market their personality as, or the company will try to market their personality and their scores, of course, for their own image brand. Like for example, um, you, I guess you could compare it to the Formula One. Like um, you have, it has nothing to do, of course, the Formula One Mercedes with a road car Mercedes, but the technologies that the drivers like Lewis Hamilton or Nico Rosberg are pushing in these very high-end race cars will at some point find their way into, mass, into a mass production car and that is probably the way overclocking is going. And we actually have an, a similar 
uh, that this could work out. We have a, an example for in, in gaming already because you have Fatality, which has Fatality brand motherboards, headsets, mice, whatever, and he's not even actively playing anymore, but his name is so huge because he was one of the biggest, you know, most successful eSport people ever that he's still like valid mar marketing reason for, for companies out there. And this is where I think the elite is heading. <coughs> like one step down, I think we're probably staying about where we are right now. We're having like competitions where maybe 20, 30 people like the top of the world besides the real high class elite will come and compete for um, stuff like, at stuff like MOA or the, um, um, the ROG OC challenge like we had this weekend and um, go all out or full out on, on benchmarks and the newest hardware which is like just like a small level down and then I think we have like a third part uh, with enthusiastic amateurs you could probably say and it wouldn't be as, as strict as competitions as you might have like we have right now with cert certain set of rules but it would be more like entertainment I guess like I was I was having ideas like um, because it's probably hard to um, for a viewer who's not really experienced with overclocking to keep him entertained for like eight hours on a live stream so uh, we were thinking about what what could we do to make stuff like that more fascinating to people who are you know first-time viewers or something and we thought about stupid stuff like maybe um, each you know, do a, like one-on-one -on -one benchmark each of them gets like three of three liters of LN2 and just you, you set like certain milestones like for example <coughs> like I don't know 20,000 points in 3D mark and now who reaches that first and submits a score he can get another liter of LN2 from the other person so like they're really having to push it fast and hard in order to be able to have a longer endurance at the end actually because they can you know put the other per person under pressure more and I think we, we would have to come up with ideas like that to, <coughs> to kind of um, get newbies, really newbie viewers into overclocking more because they can't relate to any scores really but they could you know laugh about in Germany we say schadenfreude haha that guy just stole that other guy like a leader of LN2 so he, he's really under pressure to get any results done with that few with that few amount of LN2 at all. <coughs> if you really want to have fun with overclocking as, as a beginner and want to get into competitive overclocking, um, I think first have a look at HWBOT, see which benchmarks there are, and maybe try to figure out what you, what you like to do because there's several stuff actually. Like some people prefer 3D benchmarks, so GPU overclocking mostly, other prefer 2D benchmarks like the CPU only. Um, if you're really a beginner and um, that's what I did at least, I started with 2D benchmarking because in the beginning it's not, not too easy to actually handle, there's a lot of stuff going on while overclocking, you have to handle the temperature just right, like you have to stay in a certain, um, certain amount of you have like only a spread of three degrees Kelvin maybe plus minus where you can actually operate efficiently in. Uh, you have to handle the biased windows and um, you have to get to learn the benchmarks you do because each of them has certain tweaks to it and certain, um, certain things you should know about them. For example at Firestrike Extreme you should know or regular Firestrike even as well. You should know that like right after the first loading screen you should really pour some LN2 on that, uh, on that GPU because it's going to consume almost double as many watts as it will for the rest of the benchmark for like the first second or something for example. Uh, I was benching with, with Roman a 780 Ti and we had a peak of the 780 Ti and we're not counting the, the, the wattage coming out of the PCI connector on that and we had a peak of 2451 watts which is crazy and we were amazed that our PSU actually ha was, was able to handle that. So pretty much start slow, you don't need the, the fastest 
hardware, the newest hardware out there actually, go out to eBay, buy stuff like, I can really recommend Socket 775. I know it's six to something years old, but you can really learn a lot about how a computer works and how memory, CPU and GPU interact with each other from, from that platform. Plus, you can get it on eBay really cheap and um, that's true for mainboards, that's true for CPUs and you can get graphics cards from that generation as well and you will still be able to post nice scores on HWBot without risking you know, too much money and you will actually find yourself learning a lot quicker than going on starting with Haswell E for example at the moment. I've been to Taiwan several times uh, but I always enjoy coming here because you, you don't only meet industry guys but a lot of the overclockers as well which I really enjoy because pretty much every enthusiastic overclocker from all over the world they're all coming here and uh, we're staying together in an apartment instead of each in a hotel and we rented an apartment for like eight people and all the overclockers were staying together and we were having fun partying, talking, overclocking, stuff like that and uh, this is a real good experience I can recommend to anybody and to any be beginner overclocker, you know, don't be afraid of big names or anything because really in this community we're all open and we're all supportive and I can just say for myself, I learned from, from Roman which is one of the top ten in the world and he, he I don't know, he took me on like a padawan pretty much and said well think about this and that when, you, when you're benching and he wasn't like oh I can't tell you a tweak like that because you know you might get a bigger, better score than me in some benchmark because he doesn't care because uh, he wants to have more enthusiastic people in the community than he cares more about that than about somebody beating his score or whatever so just join us on HWBot on the forums or on, uh, on the PC Games Hardware Forum as well if you like and um, ask the questions you, you have and you'll surely get an answer.